Are you looking to bring in Rhys James or are you looking to take out Ben White? Here are the top transfer tips ahead of game week 15. Let's get into it. Yo, listen up, Rue is stepping up the game Where fantasy premier league runs in his veins From transfers to captains, he's always on top Guiding you through every game week non-stop They say Rue got that style of flow Welcome to the channel, enjoy the show Wild cards, free hits with so much vibe If you're hunting for success, then make sure you subscribe Good day, mate. Welcome back to the channel. I'm FPL Root and welcome back to another FPL video. So in today's video, we're going to be looking at the top transfer tips ahead of game week 15, going through some of the players that have been bought in the most and some of the players that have been taken out the most. If you are new to the channel, please make sure you do subscribe and smash a like on this video too. Uh, we'll start off with the Liverpool goalkeeper. So I'm sure a lot of a, a lot of you do know that Alisson is injured. It's likely to be between three to five weeks around that sort of time frame. But let's not forget, we're in December, we're in the Christmas period. That means that could that could be many, many, many game weeks. Um, in terms of if Alisson is out for, say, two to three weeks and he's back, say, January, that could be up to five game weeks that Kelleher does, does get. So it is an option to, to actually look at him and see if it's worth bringing him into your team. First of all, we're looking at the price. Unbelievable, 3.9 million. 1.5% owned, so the price is very, very good. If you do have someone like Turner, then that's an easy swap. Um, obviously, Turner has lost his place in the Nottingham Forest team, so having Liverpool starting goalkeeper for the next, like I said, five, six, seven, potentially eight game weeks um, is a really, really nice option. Liverpool's fixtures, however, the next two do look really, really great with Sheffield United away and Chris, uh, Crystal Palace away. Um, but after that, they do get a little bit tough. So they've got Man United at home, Arsenal at home, then Burnley away, good game. But then they've got uh, Newcastle at home. Then they've got Bournemouth away, so good game. And then they've got Chelsea at home, Arsenal away. Uh, so it is a mixed bag. I'd say 50-50 that them two Arsenal games, Man United and Chelsea as well, can be tough. So um, not the best, best fixtures, but they are good enough, I'd say, considering uh, Liverpool's defence has actually normally pretty, been pretty good this season. Obviously, they conceded a few goals against Fulham, but apart from that, the defence has been pretty solid. Um, do I think it's worth a transfer if you do have Ariola or you have Onana or you have Pickford? Um, do I think it's worth going to Kelleher? Probably not. I wouldn't actually recommend a goalkeeper transfer unless you're absolutely desperate. However, if you do have three, two free transfers and you've got um, no other no other place in the team to use it for um, and you do have kind of a spare chance so then why not go for it um, however I wouldn't be taking out your starting goalkeeper I'd potentially be going to your substitute goalkeeper so someone like Turner who's not playing and then bringing in Kelleher so that way um, if Kelleher does end up um, well losing his place when Alisson does come back then you will have your starting goalkeeper there and you won't have to make another transfer uh, so for that reason I think if you are taking out Turner, etc., or your sub goalkeeper, and I do think it's worth it. While we're talking about um, goalkeepers that are going to be playing because of another goalkeeper being injured, Newcastle have the same situation. So Nick Pope is actually um, probably going to be out for around the same time, potentially even longer. Um, he has dislocated his shoulder, um, which for a player, it's not that big a deal, I'd say. Maybe you miss a couple game weeks, a few, three, four, five game weeks. But um, with Nick Pope, with being a goalkeeper, that is a crucial part. They do use their hands to save and use their arms. Um, so for me, I think he will be out quite a while. I think he'll be out at least five to six game weeks. And in that time, Newcastle have got Everton away, Spurs away, Fulham at home, Luton away, Forest at home. So some really, really good fixtures in there. After that, they do run into three tough fixtures, Liverpool away, City at home, Villa away. But um, if you can get probably them next five fixtures, you'll be yeah, over the moon to have someone like Dubravka, who's the substitute goalkeeper for Newcastle. He's 3.9 million too. And I think I do trust, just a little bit trust, um, Newcastle's defence to keep a clean sheet rather than Liverpool's at the moment. Although Liverpool are one of the most solid teams in the league, I just um, think with Alisson missing, he makes such a huge difference, obviously. Um, to Liverpool, he saves them so many points and shots and expected goals that I think um, Liverpool might start conceding a few more. So for me, I'd probably go Dubravka if you are looking for that 3.9 million goalkeeper. If not, 
I think just uh, not make, don't make the goalkeeper transfer. I don't think it's worth it unless you are taking out your substitute goalkeeper. So now that we're talking about the Arsenal defender, Ben White, so a player that was in a lot of our teams last season and he did so, so well. This season, he has had a price increase. So he's now currently 5.7 million. Um, and a lot of people are taking him out because he has missed or he hasn't started the last three game weeks. So he ended up coming off the bench um, for against Brentford. So for one minute <laughs> and then 11 minutes against Wolves and then Burnley, he didn't play at all. He did have a slight, I'd say knock, but um, especially in them um, Brentford and Wolves games, he was he was cleared fit to play. So there's no reason why he um, shouldn't play. Obviously, Arsenal have Champions League at the moment, so there is a lot of time for rotation in the squad. And Tommy Asu has been playing right back. However, um, those of you that are thinking about taking out Ben White, I would kind of wait a game week because Tommy Asu does have a knock. And with how soon the next game week is, um, it's on yeah Tuesday night for people in the UK. Wednesday morning for us in Australia, um, looting away. So it's a really, really good fixture. So I would keep Ben White as I do think he will play that game because of Tommy Asu's knock. Um, further along, it's probably start, start I'd say, looking um, elsewhere. 5.7 million to have a non-guaranteed starter is a bit rough. I wouldn't go to Tommy Asu because I think you're just going to get the same problem. But you can afford someone like... Um, like Saliba for that price, who you know is going to start guaranteed minutes. Um, yes, you might lose a little bit of attacking threat, but Saliba's got two returns this season. Um, and I don't think Ben White has been as attacking as he was last season. So this season he's got one goal, one assist, whereas last season he got two goals, five assists throughout the whole season. Um, so for me, if you do have Ben White, I'd wait one week and then go to Saliba, if you did want that Arsenal cover. If not, I think there are plenty of other options around that price point. We'll talk about one later on in the video, so I won't give too much away. But there is a Chelsea fullback that um, loves to get injured and, and has recently got a red card that you could potentially go for after this game week. But um, we'll get on to that now. Before we do talk about Reese James, we'll go on to Ben White's teammate Zinchenko. So a player that I guess a lot of us might have had at the start of the season. And he has had been on really, really great form um, the last few game weeks. So there was a concern that Tommy Yasu was actually going to take his place rather than um, Ben White's place. But it has been the other way around the last three, four game weeks. So um, Zinchenko has started four of the last five game weeks, um, which is, yeah, really, really good. And to be honest, he's, he hasn't really been rested or been dropped since the first three games of the season. But he was carrying a slight knock. He also got rested in game week 11, but other than that, he started every game. So for me, I do think in Arsenal's best 11, in Arsenal's strongest 11, in the most crucial games, I do think Zinchenko starts them games. And he has been chipping away, I guess, in the last three games with attacking returns. Um, he got an assist last time out and then he got a goal against Burnley in game week 12. And what a banger it was, to be fair. Um, do I think Zinchenko... Is a player you should be rushing out to buy? Absolutely not. Um, I think Arsenal's fixtures after this looting away game do not look good at all. Um, so, like I said, looting away. Then they've got Villa away. Then Brighton at home, which um, depends what Brighton turns up. But you, you're going to potentially say that they're not going to keep clean sheet in that game with how attacking Brighton are. Then they've got Liverpool away. Then they've got West Ham. So them four fixtures are kind of, could be tough potentially for Arsenal, depending again um, how the other teams play. But if Arsenal do play to their full potential, they're obviously going to win them games. But I'm just not too confident on a clean sheet. Um, however, if you do have Zinchenko, I do think you should definitely keep him. <laughs> He's been doing, yeah, like I said, really really well. But specifically the last three game weeks, um, assist. Um, then he got a clean sheet against Brentford. Then he got a goal against Burnley. So returns in all the last three. Um, so for me, definitely keep Zinchenko. And do I think he's the best Arsenal option? Absolutely not. I still think Saliba is the go-to defensive-wise. If you wanted to swap from Ben White to Zinchenko, I don't hate it, but um, I think Saliba is the most nailed on in that defence. Um, Zinchenko can still get rotated with someone like Tomiyasu when Ben White does play on the right. So for me, if you just don't want another headache, um, if you do own Ben White, then uh, definitely, definitely don't go for Zinchenko. If you are looking to bring him in anyway, um, I would 
and you can't afford Saliba, I'd probably try and find someone else, to be honest with you. Maybe someone like Thiago Silva at Chelsea, or if you do have a bit of money, someone like who I'm going to talk about next, Rhys James, um, is, is a potential option. And you're kind of attacking them fixtures really, really heavily around the Christmas period. Um, I think it's it's a bit too late for Arsenal's defenders now if you haven't already bought them in. Um, but like I said, if you do own Zinchenko, then absolutely great. Definitely keep. So finally, we get to the guy that we've been mentioning ever since the start of the video. So Reese James, the Chelsea defender, coming in at 5.4 million, and only 4.2% owned, which is incredible. And the price is incredible for someone of Reese James's calibre, a player that we all wish we could own all season if it wasn't for the injuries. Um, and he's back from injury now, so he's back, but he was suspended the last time um, against Brighton in game week 14 because of a red card. But he will be back for game week 15, which is Man United away. Uh, so Reese James only started four games this season, which was the game week one. Um, he also started game week 11, 12, 13. Um, so four games only started and he's got one assist, which for me is really, really good. He hasn't played 90 minutes though, so he hasn't actually played above 76 minutes. This is the highest amount of minutes he's played, um, which on paper might look like it's a bad thing. But considering this season with how many, how long stoppage time is, with how long games go on to, having a defender come off around 75 minutes, 76 minutes, it's a positive in my eyes. Um, I think having a player that you can bank the clean sheet, um, potentially bank the clean sheet, um, you know, you, you can kind of relax for the next 20, um, 25 minutes, depending on under time. Um, so I do think that's actually a good thing. However, it is a massive, massive headache. Um, his injury, I guess, proneness. Um, we've seen already this season, he started the first game week, then he got injured. Um then he got kind of rushed back a little bit too early. Then he got injured. Then he got his red card. Um, so for me, I I would definitely um, throw caution to the wind, have someone on your bench that is ready to come on if you do decide to bring in Reese James. But for me, I do think the fixtures are just like irresistible, to be honest. Um, I don't think you can ignore them. Yes, Man United away probably is a tough game. They've, they've only failed to score in four game weeks this season, which is a pretty good um, stat. It sort of scored in 10 out of 14 game weeks. Um, so if you can hold out, then I probably would hold out to game week 16. But after that, their fixtures look incredible. Everton away, Sheffield United at home, Wolves away, Palace at home, Luton away, Fulham at home. Up until that go, that takes you to the 1st of, January, 1st of February, where they will have Liverpool. Um, so some really, really good fixtures in there. Um, and that, at that price... I think it's a no-brainer, really, um, from next game week. If you want to do it this game week, then I don't blame you at all. Um, I think he will start. However, I just would be very, very cautious that he's very, very injury-prone. Um, will Potch want to try and manage his minutes by maybe playing him against Man United, which will be on Wednesday night in the UK, and then playing him again on Sunday against Everton, and then playing him again on Sunday, um, on Saturday, and then on Saturday, and then on Wednesday. So there's a lot of fixtures Wednesday, Sunday, Wednesday. Then Chelsea also have a Carabao Cup game as well against Newcastle. So there's also that to factor in. Will Poch want to concentrate on the Cups more rather than the league um, and play Reese James in that and then rest him on the weekend? It's just something to take into consideration. For me, however, I've still got my wild card, so I will be wild carded in game with 19. I am looking at Reese James as a serious, serious option to bring in if not this game week, definitely game week 16. Um, so all I have to do is kind of get through <laughs> with him and my team until game week 19 where I can wildcard. So it will be only for three game weeks. I'm just hoping he can stay fit for three game weeks. Um, fingers crossed. But um, So I, would, I won't have to stress too much about him staying fit longer term. It's kind of a three game week punt, if you want to call it. So I think if you do still have your wild card, I think Reese James is a really, really good option from game week 16 onwards. Um, but if you are looking to take out someone like Ben White, um, maybe even someone like, you've, you've noticed the Arsenal fixtures are not great, maybe take out Saliba or take out Gabriel and you want to go for a big, big punt. And I think Reese James is that person. We know how good he can be attacking wise. 
We know how solid, I guess, Chelsea can be. They started the season off not too bad. The last few game weeks have not been great. They conceded two against Brighton, four against Newcastle, four against City. Um, so it's not been great, but um, Rhys James' attacking threat is ridiculous. Last season wasn't great. He only started 14 games, though. So um, he actually got one goal, two assists. But the season before that, five goals, nine assists, which is a f- from a fullback, from a wingback. Then he got one goal, three assists. Then he got two assists in the, his kind of debut season. So we're kind of looking at that 21-22 season where he did get five goals, nine assists. We know he can do it. I remember captaining him once in a um, double game week where he it kind of summed him up perfectly, to be honest, um, where he got a goal and I think he got an assist in the first game and then they kept a clean sheet. And then he was injured. He got injured, um, which is just classic Reese James for the second game. Um, but obviously, I was more than happy with that goal assist and clean sheet. But it's just what could have been with with Reece James. And I'm just hoping if you do bring him in or if I bring him in, that he does stay fit. So I'm not sure how much this part of the video will affect all of you. So if you're a non Bruno Fernandes owner or you don't own anyone in that sort of price bracket, then definitely skip forward to the next part. But if you are, and I would kind of pay attention to this part of the video. So Bruno Fernandes is being transferred out by a lot of people still. He's only 14% owned, but 8.3 million is a lot, a lot of money. He's actually not done um, too bad, I'd say, over the last few game weeks. He kind of gets a return every other game. Um, so let's start from game week six. So he got 10 points against Burnley. Then he blanked for two games. Then he got seven against Sheffield United. Um, United, then he blanked against City, then he got um, 11 against Fulham, blanked against Luton at home, then he got 6 against Everton, blanked against Newcastle. So he should <laughs> return against Chelsea, and I don't think he's actually done too, too bad this season. It's just there are so many good midfield options um, for cheaper than Bruno, um, never mind for the same price. For the same price, you are, I guess, struggling. Um, you obviously had Rashford around that sort of price point. Uh, Son's a little bit more expensive, Saka, um, but apart from that, there's no one really around that sort of price point. It's either like six million, seven million. Um, but if you do still own Bruno Fernandez, I would definitely go to Mbermo. Just be careful though; he does have a blank in game week 18. But until then, some really, really good fixtures: Brighton away, Sheffield United away, Villa at home, and then post then some really good fixtures: Wolves at home, Palace away. Uh, Forest at home and potential double game week in that too. You could even go for someone like Bowen, who's 7.6 million, um, or someone like Erdegaard if you really wanted to have a differential. Um, but for me, I think it's definitely worth downgrading Bruno Fernandes because there's not even an easy person to go to from that price point. So you're not kind of saving that money for anything else. So for me, there are much, much better. Um, the midfielders out there I would definitely move on so here is the fourth highest scoring goal scoring midfielder in FPL or well, in the Premier League this season is He Chan the Wolves midfielder coming in at 5.6 million and under 6% owned so he is the second highest scoring Korean in the charts too um, obviously Sonny's above him but for me I do think he's a really 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 good option um, over the next few game weeks look at them next three game weeks but in particular um, are really good for, for He Chan. Um, so for me, I do think he should be considered to bring in. So, like I said, Burnley at home, Forest at home, two amazing home games. Then West Ham away, uh, Chelsea at home, Brentford away, Everton at home, Brighton away. So, really, really good game weeks until the end of Jan. Um, he's shown that he can deliver. Um, in, ter- in any game, really. Um, he scored against some of the big teams too, against Newcastle, against City, um, against Liverpool too. So he can do it. So it doesn't really matter about the fixtures for him. I do think he is nailed. There was a time maybe towards the start of the season where he wasn't nailed. But now, especially that Neto's out, he's definitely, definitely nailed. And um, although a lot of us did think that um, Wolves might, I guess lose a bit attacking wise because of um Neto. Um they've actually still scored goals in their last three games. So um for me and I think it's a big part to do with Huang. Um do I think that he can match someone like Gordon potentially over the next three. However I do think Gordon is a is a better long term pick. If you can't afford Gordon, I actually think Chang is 
better than um, someone like Palmer. Uh, obviously, Palmer missed out on game week 14, which is not why I'm saying this. I just think um, Chan is more um, has more of a goal threat in terms of open play, and potentially he could be on penalties. Um, I don't know that for sure, but he potentially could be on penalties. So that is another big thing. And I think the next three fixtures do look so good for Wolves and the next seven or eight look good too. So if you are looking at a player, maybe you've got Gordon, maybe um, you need the other enabler just to enable Salah, Son, Haaland, maybe even Trippier. Um, I think he chan is a really, really good option. And I do think he is better than Palmer. So I'll definitely be looking to bring him in if you are looking for a player around that price point. We've seen all season what a struggle it is to bring in uh, basically a striker that is not early in Haaland. We've gone through Watkins, Alvarez, Solanke. Um, even some of us have brought in Chris Wood, which at the time I did think was a good option. Um, even now, I think it is not a bad option. But is Isaac that second striker we've been looking for that is going to be consistent? Yes, Watkins was consistent too, but not really in terms of goals. He was just chipping in with the assist. That's game week 14, yes, he did get the goal and an assist, but a lot of people did take him out. In terms of uh, forwards, though, um, Isaac is actually in, the, in third in the running in terms of goals scored. Um, so he is up there already, but he's an extra good option because... Callum Wilson is injured, so his minutes have gone through the roof. Um, that has actually been shown over the last two games where he started both of them games, 80 and 90 minutes he's played. But there were obviously big games against Chelsea and Man United, both at home, and they won both of them games. However, the next few games, I think fixtures-wise, are a little bit of a mixed bag for someone like um, Isaac. So they do have a massive, massive Champions League games as well in between this, but... Everton away, then they've got a massive, absolute massive Champions League game against Milan where they need to win to have any chance of qualifying. And I know Newcastle are going to want to get Europa as well um, if they can't get Champions League. So that it's a massive, massive game. Then they do go to Spurs away um, with Romero back, with a doggy there playing, with Basuma, with potentially Saar back too. So it's a different, different Spurs to what we've been seeing in the last few game weeks, even though they did look good against, um, well, look good attacking wise against Man City. Um, defensive flyers, not so sure. So that could be a good game for Isaac. Then they um, play Fulham at home and Luton away in the league. So some really good games. Then they've also got Forest at home in game week 19. But then their fixtures do turn pretty bad with Liverpool away, City at home, Villa away. So. I, I guess you're going kind to of looking at can you get until the 2nd of Jan where they play Liverpool away. For me, I'm not too sure. I think Callum Wilson will be back by then. He's actually just come out saying that he's um, getting closer. Um, I'm not too sure what that means. But for me, that's probably around two to three weeks, which is actually three to four game weeks. So you are getting potentially even five game weeks, you are getting a good chunk. So if you are looking to make that move, whether that's Wilson to Isaac, I would just do it. I think um, Newcastle are looking really, really good at the moment. Um, they're not scoring, i say, a load of goals. Yes, they put four past Chelsea, but Chelsea did have 10 men. So um, they're not scoring loads of goals. But um, being the number nine for them, I think he will get chances and he will get goals. Um, and I do think it's a, it's a differential at a time where a lot of people are either jumping off Watkins, a lot of people potentially even jumping off Alvarez, even the next two fixtures are good, or have already jumped off Alvarez, maybe going to Solanke. I think Isaac, if you can afford him, is a nice, nice differential to have um, over people that do have Watkins, etc. If you have liked this video, please make sure you do smash a like and subscribe as well. Um, team selection video to come later on this week, well, just before the deadline on Tuesday night for the UK. Um, and we'll be producing videos post that for game week 16. Um, please leave a comment as well what you think on these transfer tips and what chances you're making for game week 15.